Uh, hi, my name is Anthony Watson, and today I'm going to be talking about self-balancing binary search trees. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so first, I just want to do a quick refresher of binary search trees. Um, just go over the general characteristics, uh, just what they are and what makes them so awesome. And then we're going to take a look at some of the most uh, popular and kind of widely implemented self-balancing binary search trees. Uh, so as we've seen time and time again, they're kind of like one of the gold standards uh, when it comes to structures and programming. Uh, so they're one of the, the many structures that help us to house and persist uh, data. Some other structures you guys probably know are like hash tables and linked lists, but there's a bunch of other ones out there. Uh, uh, one that stuck out, stood out to me was the self-organizing list, and those just improve uh, the efficiency of linear searches by pushing items that are more frequently searched for to the front of the head of the list. Um, by doing that, they can reach uh, almost constant time in the best case. Uh, so for binary search trees, though, uh, in your best case, you're going to get a uh, time complexity of uh, big O of log n. Uh, but in the worst case, you're going to get a time complexity of O of n, uh, which is pretty much just a linked list. Uh, so the question really is, how do we avoid uh, getting that time complexity of big O of n? And I have a small illustration here for you guys, uh, just to see this here. So we can see our tree is extremely unbalanced. Uh, so pretty much each node is just pointing to the node right next to it. Um, so if we were to search for 25, which is the greatest value in this list, uh, we literally have to go through every single node to reach that value. And so we really want to avoid that and make the most out of our binary search tree so we can really reap the benefits of it. And that's where self-balancing binary search trees really come into play. Uh, what they do is they guarantee uh, big O of log n in the worst case. Um, they have algorithms built right into their code and logic built right into their code uh, for the tree to remain balanced throughout insertion and deletion, which is typically when the tree would become unbalanced. Uh, so the two I'm going to focus on today are the red-black tree and the AVL tree. Uh, so the red-black tree is pretty much your typical binary search tree, except that it has an additional bit of data on each node that just defines whether the node is either red or black. Uh, in addition to that, any leaf node that doesn't have, uh, well, any node that has branches without a child on it gets a a leaf node on it that gets a value of a null. And I have an illustration here, just so we can see what that looks like. Uh, so you can see the colors. Uh, it's pretty brightly painted there with the red nodes and the black nodes. And then you can see the null leaves on the branches without any children. Uh, and so the red black tree is kind of, what keeps it balanced is it's, it's, it has these rules on it that keep it balanced. And there's five of them. Uh, so each node is either red or black, which we saw. Uh, the root node has to be black. All of the leaves are black. Uh, if a node is red, then both of its children need to be black. And any path from a given node to any one of its uh, descendant nodes needs to have the same amount of uh, black nodes between it. As. So if we're going from uh, node X to node Z, we need to have the same amount of black nodes there as if we were going from node A to node B uh, in our tree. Uh, and for those of you guys that know Java, uh, the red black tree is uh, the underlying structure in the tree set class and the collection hash map. Uh, but it's, it's all over the place. It's used for a bunch of different things. And next up is the AVL tree, which is named after its creators. Uh, this is actually the first self-balancing binary search tree back in 1962. Uh, it was created by Georgie Adelson Velsky and Evgeny Landis. Um, and this is governed by uh, the balancing factor. Um, pretty much what that says is the height of any given node, well, the height of node n, left subtree, uh, excuse me, right subtree, minus the height of the left subtree uh, needs to be no less than negative 1 and no greater than 1. Uh, so there's a range there, and, and the AVL tree is only said to be balanced if the balancing factor is within that range. Otherwise, you would need to go
go through tree rotations to refactor the tree so that it is balanced. So as you can imagine, any time you would insert or delete from the AVL tree, uh, it's going to become unbalanced because uh, the balancing factor is so rigid. So you're going to need to refactor the tree at any time you insert or delete, which uh, isn't great for insertion and deletion purposes. Uh, so for that particular reason, that's why the red-black tree is better for insertion and deletion. Uh, but with an AVL tree, uh, because it's so rigidly balanced, it's a lot better for data retrieval because uh, a red-black tree, because it's not as rigid as the AVL tree, it can become a little balanced, so uh, you're not reaping the full benefits of it, of a, of a binary search tree. Uh, but red-black trees are better for general use cases. Uh, and that's pretty much all I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, but like I said before, there's a bunch of other data structures out there uh, that can be really fun to dive into. And here are my sources. Thank you.